Hey guys, how's it going? At long last, we have new Bullet For My Valentine music coming. Uh, it's coming this Friday, June 18th. They put out a little teaser trailer on Instagram and on their socials yesterday. So today we're going to be talking about it. Going to be talking about the little teaser they put out, um, the last album, and uh, what we're hoping for on the next one as well. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so the last bullet of my Valentine music we got was um, back in uh, 2018. So that's three years ago now, and that was the Gravity album. Now, I know Gravity wasn't everything that everybody wanted. Um, it was a little bit of a divisive record, and I think Matt Tuck has actually admitted that. Guitars were tuned down to drop B, just for like a, a much big, heavier sound. Um, and they brought in a, a shed ton of electronic influences on, on that one as well. I think Matt did uh, writing sessions with uh, one of the writers from Massive Attack even. A lot of the songs were sort of based around these electronic soundscapes and kind of the riffs were kind of just like layered on top. It was a less riff orientated album. It was more about sort of the, the open notes and stuff like that. And yeah, it, it, it was okay. The album was okay. It's not what everybody wanted. I liked it because I'm a Bullet fan, but I will not lie to you. It is not my favorite Bullet record. What it was trying to accomplish, I, I, I do get. They were trying to get that big sort of anthemic vibe going on. Great big choruses. Um, huge on the electronic sort of uh, influences on there as well. Um, but sometimes it just missed the mark a little bit, which is unfortunate because a lot of bands are doing it these days where they're sort of layering electronic elements and stuff. And it works, it does. It makes for a big, heavy sort of sound. Some songs in there I do really like, I do get it. Matt was going through a, a horrible time with like a, a divorce and you know, he, he was having to like pick himself back up again and his life got flipped upside down. So it's a little bit of a personal record for him, I guess. Um, I guess the story is all in the lyrics. One thing that really, really did sort of um, bum me out a bit is uh, the ending. And they're not the only band to have done this. And they ended the song on this somber acoustic song, uh, Breathe Underwater, something like that. And Architects did it on the last record. And don't even get me started on the last Architects record. That's a, if you're an Architects fan, you know where I'm coming from, the, from this one anyway. Um, the album, in my opinion, wasn't my kind of thing anyway, but to have finished it on a, a somber acoustic track, again, it kind of just lowers the tone. I like albums to just go out with a big slam to the face, a big sort of bang, like, uh, you know, Metallica with Damage Inc. or Dyer's Eve, that sort of thing. I think heavy metal albums work really well when they finish on something super fast and thrashy and heavy. It kind of gives you that sort of, like, last push of energy. You know, like, uh, when you see a band live, and they play like one of the heaviest songs they've got last and it's kind of everybody's tired and you know everybody's like covered in sweat and uh, and their voices are hurting from singing and it's like right guys this is the last push and you kind of sort of like psych yourself up for the last number on a record like gravity which was quite a difficult listen anyway for the last track to be this uh, sort of woe is me I don't know. I, I, I get it. It's from the heart and everything. Um, and it, it's a nice acoustic song, absolutely. But maybe if that was like pushed somewhere back on the record and they finished with something a, a little bit more heavier, maybe that would have ended the record with a less sort of like bitter taste, in my mouth at least. Another thing uh, that a lot of people missed on that album was the guitar solos. No guitar solos. It was like a, a Saint Anger kind of situation where it's like, well, what, where the hell is Patch? You know, um, the songwriting is there. The songs are quite well put together, maybe a little bit repetitive. And my good friend Matt, the Riff Master, put out a video on Gravity when it came out, just talking about it, what he liked about it, what he didn't like about it. And he pointed out something that is so right. It's the same riff. I was, try I was trying to think of um, some riffs to play for this video, um, but not a whole lot were coming to mind because there's not a whole lot of memorable riffs on that album. But he said the the breakdown riffs and the main riffs and stuff like that, it's the same sort of... It's that da-da-da-da. 
da 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 It's that same riff being played right the way through the record. All the breakdowns, they seem to follow the same sort of jerky kind of thing. And he was spot on right there. It's kind of like the regurgitation of the same riff. Another thing as well, which was, I think, the saddest thing for me, is we got the heaviest track off that album about a year to it coming out, which was Don't Need You, which was like sort of like a standalone single. They re-recorded it for this song. Jason redid all his uh, drum parts. Whether the guitar parts were reamped or what, I, th I think they were all re-recorded. There's certain nuances in there. It, it is a little bit different. The guitar tone is different. And I actually find the original version a lot more sort of ballsier. I find the vocals to be a lot more sort of angry. It's minor nuances, but the thing I'm getting at here is that was the heaviest track on that album. And that's the first cover I did on my channel, actually, uh, when I started doing this. This. and I really love that song so I was expecting more of that and the fact that that was my favorite song off the album and that had come out a year prior and it was just a little bit different through you know maybe a bit of layer and the drums were different the vocals we re-recorded the guitars re-recorded the song is exactly the same um it just sucks that you know I'd already heard that one and that's the one I like the best I guess that chorus is probably one of my favorite parts in that album. The whole, um, when it just starts coming in with the palm mutes, you don't see a whole lot of that in choruses. The, uh... So there we go. That's the last music we had from Bullet My Valentine. Gravity, divisive album, some uh, some okay moments on there, but for the true Bullet fans who want uh, techy riffs and guitar solos and, thr and and thrashy stuff on there, and it, it it just it just wasn't on there for a lot of people. So the new album, new music. They put out a thing for the Patreon on the weekend. Everyone was expecting that announcement to be uh, a new song. Everyone was quite disappointed because <laughs> um, they said they had an announcement to make. And I get why they're doing that. Bands need to make money, um, especially after COVID-19 and all that sort of stuff, not being able to tour. You know, um, I completely understand. Musicians just don't make money anymore, you know, or rather it is difficult to make money in, in this industry, right? So we understand why they've set that up. That is a good source of income for them. And at the same time is that the fans are going to get something really cool. They're going to get behind the scenes stuff in return. They're going to be able to hear the music first, apparently, before anybody else. And they get like signed pictures and stuff like that. So there is something in it if, if you're willing to, to part with your, with your money each month. But either way, everybody was a little bit let down over the weekend uh, i think it was last friday and then last night provided i get this video up today it might be tomorrow so two days ago for you guys or one day ago i don't know um but this week anyway they put out uh, a little teaser video with this like subliminal messaging kind of thing going on very very, very fast pace um saying june 18th right at the end and what they did is they played and, and here's the thing they played snippets of some of their heaviest songs in that little clip i think it comes in on a scream aim fire that's in there um no way out that's in there that's one of the heaviest tracks off of venom so you've got scream aim fire which is one of the heaviest tracks off of scream aim fire uh no way out which is one of the heaviest tracks off of venom yeah see where i'm going with this then they've got don't need you which is absolutely the heaviest track off of gravity i think they're hinting at the fact that they're going back to the heaviness and back to sort of the the thrashy sort of edge. Matt said in an interview last year as well that they're wanting to go back to uh, sort of a, a more heavier sort of vibe. He said that the album is going to be a little bit more of a, a cross between Gravity, I know, Gravity and Venom. And I guess what he's saying there is probably the size of Gravity uh, in terms of like the production and maybe keeping the electronic vibes and stuff like that, but just like the brutality of Venom, like with the, the really sort of like thrashy riffs and um and the, the heavier numbers that were on that one <laughs>
Matt said in that interview, I'll try to remember to leave a, uh, a link down the bottom for you to that original interview. Um, but he said the vocals on the album were going to be like a 60% heavy and like screaming and stuff like that. And then a 40% clean as well, which is another really good sign because that just screams gnarliness, right? And, and, and heavy songs. And he said that uh, there's eight, there were eight songs written at the time. And basically they wanted to go back to that sort of more technical heavier thrashier vibe so that's encouraging for all those who are wanting a, an album that's a little bit ba more back to the form um a little bit back to what, what we expect from bullet for my valentine right so that little teaser trailer um i picked up a couple of things on it as well as the teasers and the sort of like the songs in there that might hint at the direction this album's going or that this new song that's coming um i picked up on something else in there as well i did a phone recording thing and slowed it right the way down because it was an insta one so i couldn't pause it or bring the speed down but i recorded it on my phone and i'll leave some screenshots here for you uh the first thing i saw on there was the word knives so i don't know is that going to be a, a song title again it's like it's all like the exorcist right it's like subliminal messaging with the demon so that might be a hint at one of the song titles and then a little bit later on toward the end just before it drops the june 18th right at the end and it finishes um there's something on there that says uh bring out bring out bring out it says bring and then the next slide or the next thing that pops up on the screen is out so who knows is that the name of the new song that's coming on uh on friday bring out like i said it was very fast the way it was moving and that that's what i got from it and there was nothing around that but maybe it's a teaser of a, a much lar larger sentence because bring out i'm not sure if that's um is that an expression? Correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea. Just um, let, let me know what you saw down in the comments. And lastly, the last thing I picked up in that little teaser is a riff. Right at the end, you've got Matt screaming some sort of guttural vocal and he's climbing up. Uh, kind of thing, right? And there's a riff being played over that. Um, so me being me, I sat down and I played it back and I played it back and I played it back. And this is what I heard. <laughs> That's it. That's all I heard. Okay. That's it. That is a trem picked riff and they chewed down to drop B on that one. Uh, so yeah, that might be a sign of things to come. So they're sticking with the drop B tuning perhaps. I think the majority of gravity was down in drop B. I think there was like one song on there that was in drop C, which was letting you go, which I only found out about today. Actually, I always thought that was in a uh, drop B, but uh, anyways, so yeah, so that is a drop B riff right there. As, uh, I, I believe it to be anyway. I mean, it could be pitch shifted or, or, or anything, but that's the riff I heard and it's all trend pick. So that just screams thrashy. <laughs> And this is all good preparation for me, right? For when I do the cover of this song. I'm just praying there isn't a crazy ass guitar solo in there for me to, to work out because that's really going to slow me down getting it out. Um, but I'm assuming that the guitar solos on this album are going to be back in full swing, especially with riffs like that. And especially with Padge's sort of absence in the guitar solo uh, department on the last album. I definitely think they're going to be bringing that back. But yeah, that's that's the riff. Um, that's what I heard right at the end of it. That could be, you know, that could be just like the end of the song. That could be the main riff. Who knows? Um, like I said, it is only just a, a segment of it. So, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. But that's what I've worked out so far. <laughs> And that is quite a stretch. And especially when you're tramp picking it to, to get up there in time. So, yeah, there's the riff. That gets me excited massively because it's trem picking, which I absolutely love. The drums sound quite heavy in there as well. They're, they're absolutely going for it. Matt's screaming over the top of that. And yeah, trem picking. It just screams thrashiness, right? So I think this is going to be a heavy song, whether, whatever the hell it's called. Um, whether those titles that I saw in that sort of clip, Knives or, or Bring Out, yeah, is this, the, is this the main riff to Bring Out? Who knows? So yeah, we're going to have to wait until uh, Friday to find out, right? And um, and then as soon as that's out, I'm going to have to lock myself away and uh, try and work it out and get the cover out for you guys as soon as possible, provided I can play it, right? 
Um, and then obviously uh, I've got to teach it as well after that because the deal is if I do a bullet cover, I have to do a lesson on it, right? So I hope it's technical and I hope it's heavy and stuff, but <laughs> there's a lot of work that goes into those lesson videos. Some of those poison uh, lesson videos are an absolute nightmare to teach doing uh, left and right. What you get is the condensed video. Um, but when I'm editing it, the videos are so much longer and they're long as it is. Some of them are like one hour, 45 minute videos, right? Sometimes I record like over two hours of footage and a lot of it is just me uh, messing up and having to play again or um, just the sheer length of the song. If I'm doing two guitars that are left and right, especially around the Poison era where each guitar is playing two different things. Um, yeah, it's it, it can be really tricky to teach, especially with the unusual song structures. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what they've got on this album as far as the, the, the structures go and stuff like that. And rest assured, for every Bullet song I uh, continue to cover and anything off the new album that I do, which I probably will do, um, I'll be doing a lesson on it as well. Also, Bullet are releasing this song uh, this Friday in advance for the Download Festival pilot that's happening this weekend coming, I believe. So that's something to get everybody sort of hyped up and excited. And I believe uh, from an interview that I read uh, or, or heard, I think I read it somewhere, that they're going to be playing this song live as well. So anybody who's going to download, let me know if you're going to that download pilot. Let me know if you're excited to see Bullet My Valentine or anybody else you're excited to see at the, the download pilot. And let me know if you're excited for this song because I know um, I am. And, you know, I'm, I'm obviously a, a Bullet for My Valentine nut, right? So I'm excited for it, whatever the hell it turns out to be. But let me know what you're hoping for from this track and from this album. Are you wanting them to, to go back to the Poison sort of era where, um, you know, it's unusual song structures? Or are you wanting like all out thrash, like Scream Aim Fire? Yeah, lots of more like some Metallica vibes on that album. Or are you wanting them to keep with like the, uh, the theme of gravity? <laughs> yeah, let me know if you enjoyed that album. Like I said, I don't dislike that album. It's just not my favorite album and a lot of the tracks are forgettable. Like I said, I wanted to play some riffs just in the middle of the clips here, but I just I just couldn't remember any for the life of me. There was just no memorable hooks on that album. The only one that came to mind was Don't Need You. Um, and the rest of them, because there's just so many sort of like open notes going on and stuff like that. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense isolated without the track itself. So let me know if you're you're hoping for new cool riffs, a lot like that sort of trem picked riff that I've, uh, I think I've worked out that it sounds about right. And yeah, drop B as well. That's really cool. They're sticking down in drop B. So drop B plus thrashy vibes. That's going to make for one heavy record in my opinion. So let me know what you're excited for. Let me know what vibe you're hoping for on the, on the new record. Also, let me know if you've become a Patreon and you've received any of the, uh, the updates and stuff like that. Let me know if which package you've gone for and, and, and if you're looking forward to receiving, um, that stuff that, that they've offered to, to throw out to you, like sign pictures and, uh, and new music before anybody else gets to hear it and stuff like that. And also let me know what your favorite bullet songs are. Let me know in the comments down below and let me know what vibes in the the songs you're hoping for and what songs you hope are uh, going to be like similar to other ones and stuff like that from from the previous records me personally um i would like a lot of the stuff on fever like pleasure and pain i just did a lesson video for that that sort of thrashy riff that's one of my favorite riffs right there um that sort of vibe i'd love that and maybe a little bit like the ashes of the innocent fourth fret stuff yeah all those um <laughs> That sort of thing. Fourth fret songs are like my absolute favorite types of songs ever. Um, so like Ashes of the Innocent, Waking the Demon, that sort of vibe, but like a modern take on it. So maybe like the production of Gravity, because Gravity did sound good production wise, the size of it, or even Venom. Just that sort of, um, that low bottom end. Keep some of the electronic elements in there just as like a soundscape, just to, to fill the empty space perhaps. And, you know, a little bit like Architects. Yeah, so that that sort of vibe, definitely the thrashy riffs and, and maybe even like the slower numbers, like Worthless. <laughs> That sort of thing that's going on with Worthless, the big single note kind of simple but effective, but it really works because there's a big thrashy riff in the middle of in there as well.
So yeah, those are the vibes that I'm hoping for on the new record, that sort of thing. Um, you know, big single note riffs, guitar harmonies, definitely. Some guitar solos from Padge, lots of screaming and shouting, lots of misery, right? Because that's why we love Bullet for My Valentine. And um, yeah, just some low, heavy riffs and groove, you know? Some of the faster stuff, yeah, absolutely get that in there. But then, like, slow it right down with songs like Worthless with that so slow sort of chugging riff. That, but then bring it back round into sort of like that thrashy riff that happens in the middle. So that's what I'm hoping for personally. So, yeah, let me know what you're hoping for on this album and uh, we can all chat about it down below. So there we go, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I guess we're going to have to wait until uh, Friday to find out what this, uh, this song is all about and, and hopefully an album. Um, release date as well. I hope it doesn't take too long. Come follow me on Instagram uh, for updates and stuff like that, polls and, you know, stuff where you can get involved and, uh, and come and hang out over there. Let me know as well what bullet song you'd like to see me covering next uh, down in the comments down below. And uh, yep, link to my Instagram again is down below. Link to my lessons website uh, for Zoom lessons, that's down below. And uh, yeah, really excited for Friday and thanks for hanging out today, guys. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, guys. Take care.